Hello, and thank you so very much for joining me tonight, or today, this afternoon. <laughs> I go by Luna Neat, and you might hear some rain in the background, some thunder. Hey, you know, a little ambiance, here we go. <laughs> um, what I'm creating for you right now is the Cancer Season Zodiac theme video. This video is not strictly for Cancerians, but happy birthday, Cancers! Oh, it's our time, and I feel like we all um, we all really thrive, for the most part. We all really seem to thrive during our seasons. So whether it's your moon season or your uh, rising season, we seem to just like do really well for whatever reason in our seasons, you know, I think that we're best prepared for it, perhaps. Um, in fact, I want to just uh, offer you a little guidance that um, I picked up from the Leo King recently, which is to look into your chart rulers. Um, this is something you can do simply by typing into Google, um, what is my chart ruler or, char or chart ruler calculator, and you'll be able to determine what uh, elements are predominantly in your chart as well as what planets or planet is the ruler and what are the um like second coming or like runner-ups essentially to the planets that rule your your chart i was quite surprised i found out that venus rules my chart pretty predominantly and then i have the sun saturn and pluto all um tied for you know what's essentially supporting venus anyway just some food for thought i had never thought to look that up before so i just wanted to offer that to you i also want to share that i'm not an astrologer this is not an astrology reading by any means i am going to touch about the very basics of the season but for astrology information, please, you know, seek out astrologers for that. I love the Leo King. I love um, another individual, my friend Inez Heels. She's on Instagram. I don't think she's on YouTube. Uh, and uh, Crystal Ball is like someone that I've actually, you know, met in person. We have um, friends of friends and, you know, we've been to a, uh, I think it was like a, Christmas or something like that party together. So she's a wonderful astrologer. Anyway, just a little disclaimer there. All right. So cancer season. Ooh, this is like, I was doing my research and Jesus, you know what I mean? Sweet baby Jesus. There's a lot going on cancerian season. Some stuff is a little bit confusing, but basically cancer season runs from June 21st to July 22nd. Um, we have here an interesting setup for this season because on June 21st, we have a new moon in Cancer, which is actually going to tie into the solstice, the summer solstice, and a solar eclipse. So we've got one, right? We've got one solar eclipse for June 21st, which is technically in the sign of Cancer, double Cancer, I guess you could say. Then on July 5th, we have the full moon in Capricorn, and we're also going to be having another eclipse on this day, a lunar eclipse on this day. Then on July 20th, which is still in the realm of Cancer, as far as I can tell by, you know, if it's from June 21st to July 22nd, we have the uh, another new moon in Cancer on July 20th. Now, again, I'm not an astrologer. I don't know if they like start moving stuff around, but as far as I can tell, we have two new moons in Cancer and two eclipses happening within this season. It's going to be a lot. Cancer season for um, those who are not Cancerian, those who are not water signs as well, People struggle. Like, I'm not trying to make you scared or anything like that. I, I'm fine. Like, I'm a crab. I'm just like, what? I have my shell. I'm good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I was born in this. And I'm quite comfortable in cancer season. A lot of people, though, are not. Like, it's a lot of feels. You know, I feel like I tried to make a meme once, which was like Rose McGowan. Not Rose McGowan, Jesus. Rose from Titanic, like, floating on, like, like just, like, she's, like, floating on the, like, debris or whatever. Everyone else is drowning and freezing. But she's like, mm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm just going to sing my song. It really reminds me of that. Like, you might find that you kind of float or you're, like, 
wow, like I'm right on track or wow, like all this stuff is coming up and the world is all shifting. But like, how, how do I feel okay right now? Like you might be in that boat, quote unquote. I don't know why I did that boat. <laughs> or you might feel like very uncomfortable. You might feel very emotional. You might feel very moody and all of the Cancerian elements might be like a shock to the system for some people. So you know, it's worth journaling, it's worth recording, it's worth remembering that this is a season, this is a time that we're all experiencing. Ooh, did you see that? Ooh! <laughs> nice, nice. Come here, Bomba, you scared? It's okay. We're all experiencing this kind of stuff. How funny. I'm sorry, I'm like geeking out a little bit right now with this storm. I just got like buzz. It's so cool. But in general, we're all experiencing this. Some people are just used to it a little bit more. You know what I mean? So they're like, like, oh, you're winded. Like, I'm used to this. Where other people are going to be like, oh, my God, like, this is too much to feel like I don't like this. It's OK. This is a crazy year, first of all, like the most intense year. We're all like struggling and, and being reborn and recreating and rebuilding and all of this stuff. So we're all already in a very um, unique position than we have been in previous years, of course. But on top of that, it's still moving, you know, like we're, we are going to get through this. We are going to get through this. It's so much about aligning, focusing on who you are, who you want to be, who, how you want your life to be, how you want to support humanity all of these like really important things that are always important but the pressure is on now more than we've probably ever experienced before so i'm sorry let me get back to what i'm sharing here essentially but what we can all expect to experience through cancerian season or or a better way to say that the elements that are going to be very present in the the collective field during cancerian season are going to be high emotions intense emotions moodiness shifting like very much shifting through the day to day again as a cancerian person i'm very much ruled by the moon i can't write a schedule unless i'm planning to tie in the moon cycles because i might have you know if i wasn't taking care if i wasn't tying that in i might be like okay yeah i'm gonna get all this oh perfect like i have a free day i'm gonna get all this stuff done here comes another one okay okay <laughs> Never mind. Only to find out that the moon is in Pisces or the moon is in um, Taurus or a slower moving uh, sign in general. And the energy that I feel is not like supportive of me getting all of this to do list done. So I would highly encourage you if you're not doing this already, work with the moon cycle, particularly right now, like during Cancerian season, work with the moon cycle be inspired know that when the moon is in aries you're gonna have a lot more energy when the moon is in aries typically gemini um essentially the extroverted signs so basically the fire signs and the air signs are extroverted signs the earth signs and the water signs are introverted signs that's just a general kind of way of working with it though like you have unique uh, pairings and alignments in your chart that might make you lean into certain things differently but for the most part as a guideline we can work with it that way so ooh, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting like ugh, like it's, it's very intense energy right now very intense um, so funny but essentially be prepared to be moody be prepared to feel like very inspired one day and very lulled the next day that's totally normal for us cancerian people we just learn to deal with it <laughs> um the sign of cancer is ruled by the moon and it's also tied to essentially like the the crab right like represented rather by the crab and the crab has a shell the crab is protected the crab is protective and the crab moves slowly you know like it kind of settles but it moves it's not stuck it's not necessarily like stubborn necessarily you know i'm not saying that any cancer <laughs> energy might not be stubborn but it's typically not it's cardinal it's um an activator it's an it's a um how can i say that better it's a catalytic energy i guess is a way to put it and the crab has claws so you might find yourself feeling very protective of your energy very protective of the things that are close to your heart individuals causes you might be ready to like like get out your pincher pincers or whatever they're called
called your your claws and cut people down or cut people out or like release balloons and you know figurative balloons because like please don't ever release balloons it's like the worst thing we could do for the environment one of the most terrible things but in general release things you know like cut things loose cut sails what's nice about this though and i don't mean to mislead anyone into making them feel like don't worry like you're protected this month you're gonna have like kind of like grow into a shell over this month where you're just gonna feel this need to protect but the shell is a protective energy and it goes with you you know it's not something that you come out of and then go back into it's with the crab all the time so it's nice to connect in that way through your meditations through your personal energy work and see what the shell feels like to you and like what do you find yourself called to pull in and protect what do you feel called to cut loose you know be mindful of that. I feel like boundaries are a very big part of Cancerian energy because Cancerian folks are known to be very giving. You know, the energy of Cancerian times is very giving in general. It's very nurturing. It wants to support. It wants to love. It wants to take care. It wants to um, kind of step into that maternal role in a you know, like not genderized, but that maternal role, the archetypal maternal role. But at the same time, if you cross Cancerian energy, like, I'll just leave it at that. Like, it's not the kind of thing that you want to cross. Like, you're going to be on the outside then. You're not in the circle. So, you're going to feel that in your life as well, like very clearly defined boundaries. So you might have been, you might feel very open, you might feel very open hearted, you might feel very giving, you might feel very compassionate. And you might find that in the, in the, that straw or something is enough to indicate to you a red flag or a catch a whiff or something that has you turn, that has you put your shell back up in a different way or like push something out of your inner circle. And like, I can speak from my experience, like, you can't make things up to Cancerians, you know what I mean? Like, it's, once there's a fly in the ointment, like, it's done, it's done, you know? I, I, I can't say that for every single case, I guess, but overall, like, that's a very big theme. Cancers move on very quickly. So this is a great time if you've done some, you know, releasing in your relationships already, if you've gone through a breakup, if you've gone through um, some type of family issue where you're like, you know what, I just can't talk to them anymore and I'm, that hurts me, but I can't let myself be hurt by my family anymore or um, coworkers or like anything. I'm sorry that I'm like not really drawing from all sources here, but essentially you might find this a very easy time for you to cut that cord and like really forget people. <laughs> you know, it sounds terrible, but like really like honor your boundaries and keep what's dear to you protected and realize that that's where your energy is best served. So again, being that the Cancerian energy is ruled by the moon, and we talked about the moodiness and tracking the moon cycles particularly, you know, I do it all the time, but particularly during this season, the moon is an element of mystery, of the subconscious, of magic, of, um, how do we say this? Beauty, you know, like beauty for sure. It's a feminine energy in general, but it also is a, um, a low vibration. I, I hate to say that, like even when I thought about it, like after reading this kind of stuff I was like, but I love the moon. The moon has a lower vibration than earth. The moon has a lower vibration than, you know, we're, we're earth based, right? So our vibration kind of is most happy in that, like whatever it is, like 432 Hertz essentially, right? But the moon has a lower frequency, a lower vibration. So you want to make sure you're not putting too much effort into the moon or like too much connection. And then if you are, working with planetary or celestial energies to make sure you're pairing it as well with a higher frequency. So that of Jupiter, that of Venus. Right now, I'm pretty sure both of those are in retrograde, so it might be a little more difficult, but just balancing, making sure that you're bringing things into your vibration that are uplifting and stabilize and temper essentially the more um, lower vibratory energies of the moon, if that makes sense. This is a time where a lot of dream work will come up for many people. Cancerians are known to be very mystic. It's a Cancerian energy, I'm sorry, is known to be incredibly mystic, um, incredibly intuitive, um, as are all the water signs in general. But again, like you might feel this in a different way because it's a cardinal water. So it's this catalytic, mystic energy, if, if I can use those words here. So 
working with the subconscious, speaking, building a rapport with the subconscious, nurturing like an energy of a rapport or balance or energy exchange between you and your subconscious that is nurturing, that is supportive, that honors your boundaries, that honors what you love, that keeps you protective, that just embodies all of these Cancerian traits in general can be incredibly supportive to work with and empowering as well because these are things that we want to be able to draw into our subconscious. We want to be able to draw and heighten rather our intuitive connection. We want to be able to perceive things that are below the surface, you know, that like aren't exactly right in front of your face. We want to be able to nurture. We want to be able to be loving and be loved, care and be cared for. And those are all, you know, perfectly fine human, you know, elements, right? The challenge here essentially is to make sure that it doesn't get too washed away, right? The emotional tide, for example, can come in and teach us things or tell us like, oh, I like this and I don't like this, so let me go in this direction. But the tide can also drag your ass out to the freaking like the depths of like your... <laughs> of your nature you know like of your subconscious so you want to be careful not to get dragged out and if you do find yourself dragged out to, to through with the tide it's okay you know what I mean like you didn't do anything wrong it's just an energetic experience that like you were ready for or that like your subconscious or your higher self agreed to but it's worth establishing through this month or or even now like today what are my um safety mechanisms for myself what are my foundational tools that i use like let's say if you experience depression that when i experience that deep dark depression what are my tools for getting back to shore you know what i mean or like coming up from the bottom of the ocean what has helped me in the past what can i lean into further what can i put in my toolbox so to speak that i know is a life preserver is a um like i just need to pull the cord and it helps me get back to where i was so for me that's a lot of um and and again in cancerian season what might be very helpful for people is the mystic aspects or the um, spiritual aspects so personally understanding the law of rhythm understanding that every time in my life that i have been dragged out uh, to the tides or that I have experienced like dark depression or that I have moments of like just absolutely hating myself you know and like beating myself up on the inside knowing that this has happened many times before and I always come back up for air I always swing the pendulum always swings me the other way and it's for some type of advancement that really helps me you know uh, validating your experiences, validating the emotions that you're feeling instead of shoving them down, instead of saying like, oh no, 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 that didn't, that didn't hurt me. That didn't hurt me. It's like, it's okay. You don't have to let that person know that they hurt you, <laughs> but in your journal or in the mirror or as you're praying or as you're meditating, validate what you're experiencing. Validate how deep something cut you. Validate how frustrated you are. Validating how confused you feel. Whatever it is, is a part of the process. So this is huge as that like, like that breath of like coming up for air when we potentially, if we potentially get dragged out through like that emotional um, current essentially. I hope I'm not being spooky here. It's just stuff that I think can be very helpful, right? You know, the, the lighting changed. Okay, we'll, we'll work with it. So um, maternal stuff can definitely come up as well during this season. Um, seeing, you know, whether this is, you know, you and your children in a very direct maternal kind of aspect as like you, the mother, but, you know, a lot of people aren't mothers <laughs> in the, you know, biological sense or whatever, but they are mothers to their friends or to their pets or to their plants or to themselves, right? So please don't let the mother term, you know, make you feel disconnected if, if that's not uh, something that you, your soul, you know, chose to experience this lifetime, of course, like we all have our own things, but it can be, you know, we all certainly have mothers, right? So you can do a lot of reflection or potentially a lot of reflection might come up on your dynamic with your mother. You might, if your mother's crossed on, do some prayers, do some um, like energetic offerings, whether it's incense or their favorite snacks or candy or something like that, leave offerings for them and connect if you feel chose, if you feel guided to, or, you know, you can see and connect with the archetypal mother of the earth, 
of the planet, of the um, energetic force of matter, of mother matter, and be held, see yourself envisioned, you know, like held in the womb of the earth, and just like nurtured and supported and, you know, tender, tender, tenderly cared for and all of that stuff can be very healing through this time. Inner child work is, oh, is never unhealing, right? So inner child work might come up for some people during this season as well. But again, just given the present climate of 2020 and the, the experience of these intense eclipses that are happening through this season, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot, you know, to speak on eclipses. Again, I'm not an astrologer. I, you hear information differently from other people, from, you know, various sources, but from my understanding, eclipses are portals, right? Like they are markings of major shifts. They are closing and opening of doors. They are things that usher in new times for individuals and for collectives. I would definitely research a little bit more on these eclipses particularly. I found a bunch of videos online on YouTube, very easy to search. You know, you could do like summer solstice eclipse search, something like that. If any of you have uh, resources that you'd like to share with the community here, ooh, we'd be so grateful, you know? But I don't like to speak too much on exactly what eclipses mean because I don't, I don't exactly know and I feel like they show up differently like each time I experience one. I know the last eclipse that we had, that lunar eclipse, I definitely felt it and I was like for like a couple days afterwards but it's not just the time that it happens it plays out over the next few months and even the next couple years it's like this thing that's continuously playing out so if I find any resources I'll share them with you as well but um, definitely something to look into more all right so let's let me just now that the lighting has shifted ah, there we go we're going to pull some cards so we can get a more intuitive approach to what's going to be happening this season that went, I went a little too dark there. All right. And I'm just going to shuffle these with you here. And the guidance that we're looking for, we're going to pull four stories, see what resonates most with you. You don't have to choose just one. You can choose all four. But we'll start, you'll be able to tell by the first card. You know, does this resonate? Is this active in your time frame or maybe you watch it and then it come, becomes active in your time frame a little bit later like as we get into cancerian season but we just want to ask for guidance for clarity for support to see on an energetic and intuitive level what are we going to be facing this season what is going to come up And the ones that are popping out right now, I'm just kind of considering these bonus cards that we'll touch on. I just want to shuffle with that energy. All right, give me a sec and I'll switch you around so we can see a little bit better, okay? All right, so let me show you the cards that wanted to jump out at us. The first was the world. And this speaks of a cosmic dance. This speaks of, you know, um, having a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity. And to me, it speaks of the world changing. This is a time of revolution that has never been so visible in um, the media, in, um, you know, with social media is what I mean by that. And people being able to share so much and um, congregate so effectively due to, you know, how connected everyone is right now. So I see a lot of strength in that connection and the support essentially of the cosmic dance that this is all a galactic, you know, this is the world, but the world is part of a galactic schedule, a galactic cycle in orbit. And this just kind of speaks to that for me. The second card was the three of cups that jumped out. A time of community, a time of connecting with like-minded individuals, of celebrating one another. And, you know, I hate to say this because I know I realize that this sounds quite bitchy, but also, like, if people ain't drinking what you're drinking, you know, like, if people are not on your, on your wavelength, like, crab cut them the F out, you know? Like, put the energy into the full cups of those who are in line with you. You know what I mean? I don't even have to say things exactly the same way, but in speaking on 
on let's say Black Lives Matter, on speaking on the present revolution, on speaking on, um, you know, for, for me, right? Like as somebody who identifies as a healer or as a light worker to see um, the spiritual community, not, you know, members rather, like individuals, particularly practitioners and teachers are the ones that get me the most, not speaking out, being silent, Ooh, you know, like, no, no, like, let me put my energy back into supporting those who are on, on this, uh, <laughs> how do I say this, like, on the right side of history, you know, like, on the right side of humanity, or who are ready to, like, throw down and be filled and fill each other and support each other and you know send each other energy work be in this together but like celebrate those people who are really you know I don't say on your side it's not about choosing sides but like on the side of humanity and then the other card was the two of pentacles so this shares that we're all juggling a bit. We're literally switching between timelines, it feels like, and in the physical. Like, it's not just like, oh yeah, I had this like experience or like, oh, I did ayahuasca and I have this new perspective. Like, yeah, that, that can happen. But this is like, we're juggling, you know, we're moving. It, it's, for example, having a steady job, like your normal person job and starting your own business and you're juggling your time, you're juggling your resources, you're juggling your attention. That can be a call, like something that comes up for many of us right now. But additionally, it really does feel like with the, um, you know, like yin yang kind of like motion here and the physical nature, it's all about, you know, shifting, like shifting, moving, balancing, but, but moving into a new time. Eh, balancing ourselves perhaps more in the physical reality so that we're prepared to move into this new reality. Okay. So let's go through the stories. The first one begins with the Nine of Cups in reverse. So this says that there is a feeling of something being incomplete. So essentially, these are the starts of the stories up here. And as I pull each one, you can see if this is how you've been feeling. And then we'll go through each storyline and see, you know, you can see how, what resonates, what doesn't. This is a collective reading, so it's not going to be always like perfect for everyone but in general the beginning of this story here is about feeling unfulfilled about feeling like you maybe even tight like afraid to afraid to send your energy somewhere else afraid to share afraid to speak your truth afraid to show up um, I'm using the word afraid it can be uncomfortable uncomfortable the first feelings that I got here though was like feeling unfulfilled feeling like you've been working really hard at something and now it's like oh, what did I do that for like what was this even for like there's so many more important things perhaps so maybe there's some judgment in the work you've been doing and you're like is this is this even does this even help you know like confusion a bit all right so our next card was justice in reverse and this speaks also of discord this speaks also of feeling the unbalance, like unbalance, particularly in thought, particularly in um, like not the physical, but it does manifest through the physical, but more so, you know, of the system or of um, the mental field or of like perhaps feeling unfulfilled because you're witnessing how so many people like don't see things in truth necessarily right or how many people are, are okay being out of balance or with things being unjust as an example right how can we not tie that in but for those for other people it might just be you know just an imbalance like clearly feeling imbalanced i'm unfulfilled and i don't feel balanced this could be reciprocal you're not feeling like a reciprocity with the people in your life or with the work that you're doing Wow, okay, so then we have the Eight of Cups. Uh, this fear or this extreme discomfort in letting go, like if you're unfulfilled by it, it's like we're going backwards here, right? We have Nine of Cups, Eight of Cups. I'm unfulfilled, I feel imbalanced, and I'm afraid to start over. I'm afraid to walk away. I'm afraid to... Um, 
to to let go to to walk away from this energy be this a relationship a group of friends a um work a career you know like things that you're walking away from it feels like you you feel like you want to or you need to but there is something making this very uncomfortable or something still inside yourself you, you really do need to focus your energy to healing or processing or compartmentalizing in a, in a positive way or supporting yourself in some way so that you feel more comfortable letting things go oh that cancerian energy is good for that though ah this is a great this is a great line and then we have the two of wands it is time to start over it is time to begin the new journey you know what direction it is look they know they've chosen they know the direction that it is with the two of wands here and you, it's just like you got to get over it so you felt unfulfilled you have felt imbalanced you know you have to walk away from something but it's like oh but i put so much work in and like oh my god but i don't want to start over you know, like I'm starting over in a lot of ways in my life right now as well. And it's challenging, you know, it's challenging because there's a lot of personal attachments to things, but the world needs so much right now. My communities need, need so much and, and, and like, and I love that, but like, I'm also still redeveloping myself and choosing new directions and stuff. So it is challenging, but this is about walking away from things that have not fulfilled you or even things that did fulfill you, but like, it's still time to let go and you have it i i can see here you've already made up your mind you've already made up your mind what direction is right for you so just heal you know spend time balancing spend energy work um you know like invest in your energy work invest in your personal development invest in a good pair of scissors or something to cut those cords and allow yourself to move on all right so that was one of our little stories here the next story begins with feeling isolated, feeling judged, feeling out in the cold, feeling rejected, right? Did I say that? But the the, the key to this card is like, this is self-imposed. It is. And you know, you might have been rejected by a person and you're like, what? Like, why is that self-imposed? Because you're not valuing yourself enough to know that you're worthy. Because you're not valuing yourself enough to know that there's something better coming for you and that's just how things work when they're not a good fit you don't they don't align and to hold yourself in a place of oh i'm always on the outside i always just missed the boat i just missed the i was just if it was in your orbit you're close you're very close but it wasn't a great fit so don't let yourself feel rejected here because Yes, like things don't work out, but I bet there was a silver lining. I bet it showed you something or taught you something. All right, and then we have the Ten of Wands reverse. So this is again about like self-imposed, carrying too much. It's more introspective here, let's say, about um, or internal, um, the inner realm essentially of bogging yourself down with feeling like responsible for every single thing or that you have to be in control and carry every single project or make sure everything goes exactly your way. This is a time for you to reflect on this and call back your power and direct things more effectively. You know, don't let your energy drain. Don't let your back break. Make sure you're taking time for your self-care. Delegate as you feel need needed. The King of Pentacles reversed. So in this storyline, we also have, have been feeling like we're not manifesting or that we're unable to manifest in the material realms the way that we want to. So again, continuing our story here, we've been rejected or we feel isolated. We feel outside. We feel like that thing we wanted didn't click with us for some reason. It's like, oh, oh, you know, and internally there's an issue of taking on too much or trying to start too many things or not being concise and not aligning what your internal um, desires are with, you know, what the external desires that you have. Like, like there's conflict or there's um, discrepancy essentially in the internal of what you want to create versus what you also want to create on the external. And this is messing up the ability to manifest. This is messing up the ability to feel secure in the material world. 
This is a time where you want to do a lot of re reflecting on how you feel about money, how you feel about luxury, how you feel about health, how you feel about um, security, how you feel about ownership of of like material items or or it doesn't necessarily have to be ownership but the experiences and material items because if you see here the the um the connection right it's like being out in the cold out of the comfort internally the the um desires that you have are almost weighing you down like you're weighed down by your desires and in, in that way it's not achieving the manifestations that you want and it's just like kind of um, what's that word? Um, Self-fulfilling prophecy here. All right, and then we have the King of Knights. I'm oh, sorry, the King of the King of Knights, the King of Swords reversed here as well. So this is really reflecting back on like we're not minding our thoughts. Like this storyline, we're not minding our thoughts. We're not being empowered as best as we should be by ruling what we allow into our subconscious. What do we allow into our regular conscious waking life? We have to be diligent here. We have to be um, mindful, truly mindful of what we're allowing and, and see when things are our own thoughts or what per, are preventing our ability to manifest and how we feel about things. So again, a lot of self-healing. I'm actually gonna pull a clarity card here as well. So we have the two of cups. This is about making peace, you know? And here in this pairing and in this, right away my brain goes to the left and right hemispheres of the mind, you know? Like this is not, you and another person necessarily this is you and your own mind this is your your masculine and your feminine let's say you know i'm not trying to whichever it doesn't matter if they could be both or whatever but like they, i mean they could be swapped but and just say the masculine hemisphere of um well let's just call this one <laughs> the masculine hemisphere of logic and um discernment and like mental discipline and the feminine hemisphere of like listening to your uh, creative passions, listening to your emotional guidance and that kind of stuff. But here in the middle, we, when, when those are met, right, when those are shared, when those are balanced, we come into our power, we come into, you can see like the lion head here, our strength, our ability to transcend, to transmute, to see above, to rise above with the wings and stuff. So it's about balancing your mind here and really making sure that the mental and the physical are in are are in unison together. You know, they're not in conflict with one another. Um, I use this example all the time, but if you want something in the physical world, but your brain is like, yeah, but that can never happen, or oh yeah, like bleh, like you're just you're just blocking it still. You know, and I feel like a lot of people are really hung up on this. You know, hung up on feeling rejected or like they're not good enough or something. But again, that's in your head. It wasn't that you weren't good enough for that situation. It was that that situation wasn't good enough for you, you know? Like, it wasn't that way. So let that stuff go. Okay, then we're going to step into this story. Okay, so beautiful, four of wands. This is a card of marriage, of unison, of joining forces, you know, so this might indicate that some of you have met someone or some of you have really come to identify, even if it's not yet in your physical reality, what you want going forward, what kind of legacy you want to leave, what kind of household you want to have, or, um, you know, it doesn't have to be the typical household, but like what, what is right for you and like really connecting with that from an, you know, I'm going to use the word idealistic kind of perspective. This came up in the recent lesson session that we did as well, as well as the last emotional intelligence video. You have to know what you want. You have to be patient as well in it manifesting for you. Let's not rush things in getting here, but this is a great card, like great card here. So let's see what else unfolds. Oh, beautiful. So we have the moon here as well. So this kind of ties in again for me with what I was just speaking on manifesting knowing what you want in the subconscious realms of of creation and i don't know if you can see here but like look at the comparison or the similarities between the two kind of you know two wands on each side which form this gateway and here we have these two um like i don't know what you call these but like structures here also forming a gateway so this really is an invitation to cross through cross through 
keep the attachments of of this in your mind keep the associations or your connection to what your desires are what your ideals are what you want your relationships your again household your family your legacy your your work your great work um your comfortable work though too like it's not a fight here it's it's like what am i building like what are the foundations and it can be about joining together with another person again even if that person isn't in your life now knowing what you need from that individual or what you share together can help so manifesting that from the perspective of the moon from the subconscious from really allowing that to settle into the subconscious so it's just like doing the work for you can be very supportive there and then we have the queen of wands reversed so here the guidance is the be wary or, or not wary but be mindful of your power of creation here particularly from an internal perspective because if you're working with the moon you know the subconscious the underlying stuff here remember to keep reminding yourself how powerful you are how how much of a creator you are you know it seems like there might be potentially a little um wobble there for some of us like why like why did i sign up for this or or why would i be called to this or or just like perhaps um, doubt in your own ability. But this card is here to remind you internally and, and externally, you are a creator. You can build and create anything. It's a very like Leo or feline in general, like energetic card, perhaps Lyrian if, or Lyrian. I don't know exactly how to say it. If you do any internal work or some like starseed meditations and this resonates with you, you might want to try connecting with like Lyrian, 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 um, energetic fields or, or readings or stuff like that. And we have here the, um, seven of swords reverse. So the distraction can possibly come. So this is potential, right? Like you have all this potential to really affirm what it is you want, you know, like what it is you want in that, like almost picturesque or like almost, I don't say fairy tale is in delusional, but like almost like what's your version of your fairy tale? You know what I mean? Like what is that to you? And you know, allowing that to play in the subconscious, like allowing yourself, like I always recommend the book Dynamic Thought by Henry Thomas Hamlin, allowing yourself as you go to sleep each night to focus on what this represents for you. What is your ideal? What is your um what is all that? And allow it to like settle into your subconscious by thinking about it, reading about it, imagining, fantasizing, particularly before bed or as you're getting out of bed in the morning. And then on subconscious levels, remembering like you are a creator. You have so much power. Don't don't trip, you know, don't trip up. And particularly, yo, don't trip up <laughs> on going back to carry more of the things that you were letting go of. You know, like don't let yourself fall into an old cycle. Don't let yourself with that thought coming around again or that thought inhibitor. Like what is inhibiting your thoughts? Is there a person in your life? Is there a situation? Is there a circumstance? Is there a habit? Is there anything that is um, that changes the way your brain works? So this could be drugs and alcohol. <laughs> this can be, um, you know, how you're you're thinking about a certain person, or if you're being a little obsessive, or things like that in general. Or it's saying that like there's stuff worth bringing with you, but there's stuff worth leaving behind. Don't take the bad habits. Don't keep bringing the things that mess with your ability to think clearly with you going forward because it's not going to support your, um, your ideal goal there, right? All right, last story here. Okay, so we have the Ten of Swords, everyone's favorite card in reverse. <laughs> but in reverse, it says that I feel like, and again, because we're starting off with this card, there's been a surrendering. There's been a, you know, inter this is internal. This is thought-based. This is realizations within yourself, perhaps. But you've surrendered. You've surrendered to a bad thought. You've surrendered to a pain. And when I say surrender, I don't mean like, fine, you win. I don't mean that at all. I mean you've surrendered as in, I'm not going to fight myself from feeling this. I need to feel it. So it's a be there's actually a lot of strength in this card, truth be told. I know it looks so like devastating, right? But internally, as this is coming up, 
You've surrendered to something that has been chasing you, that has been on your mind, and you've basically let yourself feel it. All right, so if that resonates with any of you, you've come to like, fine, like it's not going to work out. Fine, I struggle with this. Fine, yeah, like I need to... And you have had a cry, you had a moment, you've let it out, you've had a conversation, something has happened, but like you've, you've let it happen, you've let the wave have its way, which is really the best thing we can do, honestly, because that's what begins the process of healing, is to let it finally hit us so that it can clear out. All right, and then we have the page of swords reversed as well. So there is a new beginning forming within you, there is clarity um of like what the next step is forming within you it's still internal right now it's still as in it's not like presenting itself necessarily from the external or it's not showing up on your door like hey ready to you know do this or hey let me tell you how to think and feel but more so it's something kind of cultivating kind of blooming kind of inkling you know that that is in your thoughts or you're like why does this keep coming up why do I, why do I want to why do I want to get a book on this? Why does this keep going? Why do I keep hearing about this or that? You know, like what, it, what, why is this popping in my head? And it's like starting to form something. So let's see what we got. Ah, okay, cool. So then we have the Ace of Swords. So there will be in this season a moment of clarity, a moment of aha, this is what I meant to do. So it's like letting it hit you. You've let it hit you. You've felt it. You've cried. You've you've slept all day, you've done whatever you needed to do to process it. And there's, you know, what happens then is this turn, this ab of ability to start to think of something fresh, to start to see things in a new way. It's just a little bud at first. And then like a gift from the universe, you're able to begin again. You're able to start over. You're able to move. Through. Look at all the swords, right? You're able to move back this time empowered, this time now feeling more supported by the universe, more supported by God or whatever, you know, you kind of connect to or your higher self or whatever it is to begin. <laughs> and three of pentacles, you're going to begin building something. And it seems like it will be for community potentially or something that will be shared, but it is a, um, a time to design, you know, a time to be the architect, to um, really position yourself and position yourself particularly if you are working in a group as someone who has a lot to contribute, you know, a lot to say, a lot of discernment because when we're designing things, right, it's not like, oh yeah, that looks fine, that looks fine. Every time I do it that way, I'm always very disappointed in myself. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, why didn't I just take the time? It would have taken me an extra hour, maybe an extra couple of hours to do it better, but I had to just, you know, I, I, I was too mushy, I was too whatever, <laughs> sorry, all the whatevers, and then I regret it because now the foundation is off. So basically, you had to let something hit you, you had to let something feel, it's coming around where it's like, oh, you know, finally that's gone and I can see again, like finally I'm starting to feel empowered again, and then really coming into the empowerment of your thought and like, yes, like this is a gift from God, like my thought, my power here is a gift from the God within me and I'm able to do whatever I want and you'll bring that into the building of something new. This could be the new tower, you know, but this is physical, this is um, a project, this is a new job or your own work or a new relationship or it's, it's foundational in a sense, you know, and it's something that's going to be, as in what I mean foundational, I mean it's solid. It's something you can come back to. It's something that you can share. It's something that you can build off of is what I mean by that. So this might be the beginning of, a, like I said, like your own career for yourself, your own job for yourself, or um, connecting with community in a different way. But whatever this aha and this ah like kind of thing comes through, it will be something you can all continue to develop, to continue to build off of. Okay. Maybe just do this and I want to pull a couple I'm just kind of guided to pull some gentle cards from the Sonia Choquette oh, I'm probably butchering her beautiful name 
um, Trust Your Vibes Oracle deck here. This card, this deck's very, very, very gentle. And I think that we could use a little of this nurturing kind of energy here. So just asking for some guidance. What will we be served to focus on from our energy work perspective, from our, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff had been coming up of like doing personal work through that reading. Energy work. What can we do? What can we do for ourselves during this time? Okay, right, just looking for one more. Okay. All right. So we have see the solution. We had laugh. Expect the best and claim your boundaries. Okay, so with Seek the Solution, I mean, all of them are fairly, you know, fairly, uh, what do you call it? So with Seek the Solution, I realize all of them are fairly intuitive here. But what comes up for me is when we say Seek the Solution, it almost sounds like, well, then I expect to find the answer like, like that or like, is there even a solution? Is there one solution to all of this? I don't think so. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we can assign our subconscious. We can assign our higher self the task of providing solutions for us. We can do our best to find that middle ground, so to speak. And I don't mean to, you know, I don't mean to, to say that in a bypassing kind of situation, but also like find the middle ground, find the core of what the issue might be for each individual, you as an individual, you as in your community, us as in the world, whatever that might mean. And again, invite your higher mind, the uh, or assign rather, your higher mind the task of providing solutions to you. So this can be through fixed candle work. This can be through meditation, meditative experiences. This can be through dream work. This can be through just simply assigning things to your subconscious and like forgetting about them and knowing that like, okay, I'd love this. I'd love to see this solution by Friday or I'd love to see, you know, higher self, higher mind, subconscious mind. I assign you the task of providing me with the solution, not the challenge because it's so easy to only focus on the challenge and we need to you know I'm not saying that's wrong but if we only focus on the challenge we're not manifesting from a point of manifesting the solution or manifesting more challenges essentially or you know that's just the best words I can think of right now to explain that but the target of our energy should be on the resolution not on you know the fight necessarily and I don't mean that we shouldn't be doing the work and the groundwork that we need to do. I just mean from an energetic perspective, we want to make sure we're also including invitations for, um, again, the solution or the resolution to circumstances in general. Laugh, like f get, get the memes, like get the jokes, like have a laugh with your friend, like make fun of shit. You know what I mean? Like Making fun of something is always the best way f for me to like overcome stuff, um, whether that be um, like scary experiences that I have in my dreams, you know, or I don't know, stuff like that in general, like laugh at it. Sometimes people leave me like really mean comments, right? And I'm like, Ugh, you know, and it like hurts me. And then I'm like, actually, let me remember like who I am and what I want to let into my life and, and not and then just have a freaking laugh at like either how stupid they sound or like oh yeah sure blah 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 you know like kind of thing and just like make it into a joke and that way it energetically cuts like laughter energetically cuts through things and it twists things around and it can be such a weapon you know weapon or tool rather for preserving your energy and like letting letting go of shit that like you don't 
you don't agree to, you know? And again, like if somebody insulted me, I could be like, God, like, why would they say that? I'm only trying to help. Like, can't they? Like, what is, what is what I look like have anything to do with it? What is, what is this? Well, they don't know that. And it's like, what the heck? Like, what, but when you come back with like, oh yeah, and you like, you just make a funny voice and repeat what someone just said. It's like, it just rolls off, right? So just like, remember how like, I don't want to say making light of situations is always healthy, but if something hurts you and you need your boundaries, you know, to come in, goof on them, you know, like goof goof on them haters, right? So this kind of ties to the solution kind of card a little bit as well, but we have to expect the best here. Yes, we need to know what's going on. Yes, we are not hermits uh, or, or ostriches with our heads in the sand, delusional. Oh, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's not about that. But still, we must expect the best. We must trust that, let's say, this is all for humanity. This is all for the good of the planet. This is all for the evolution and ascension of the human species, the human mind and collective. So let's expect the best here and draw that to us right and again like claiming your boundaries I do love the like laughing in someone's face kind of thing because like there's nothing better than like letting something roll off that shell right and like cancerian season know what your armor is you know how do you make fun of things to or make light of things to make things a little less um you know challenging to experience or how can you use uh, laughter as a shield of sorts, you know, like that can come in. But also importantly here, very importantly, is our words and is our energy. Words can be deceptive. Words can be, um, you know, like words can say one thing while our actions do another, right? So we want to make sure that we're effectively with our words with our actions with our energy we're communicating with our body language with our posturing with our inflection with our declarations of self that we're really holding space for what's important for us and not letting energetic vampires energetic um like holes like inner tube holes or whatever like leaks happen Laughter is great for that, for cutting things out, absolutely. But there's other things you can certainly do. Again, candle workings, candle rituals are very helpful. Meditative, um, guided. I'm saying guided. I don't mean like you have to listen to a guided one, but you can guide your th- yourself into reclaiming, calling back your energy, holding healthy boundaries for yourself as well it can be like very helpful. But in general, right? Like I'm just like, overdoing it now but remember to claim your boundaries and hold them so important all right well i hope you've enjoyed the video so far i'm just gonna wait till it gets a little bit darker and set up for our asmr session to support uh, the collective here through this process thank you so much for joining me today and allowing me to be a little piece of your path and i'll connect with you shortly in a more ooh kind of way you know see you soon all right Welcome back. Thank you for your patience. I actually needed a whole day. <laughs> it wasn't as fast as I thought. I needed a whole day to process the beginning hits of a Cancerian season. I had a little cry. <laughs> I had a moment. Letting the waves have their way a bit. So maybe that comes up for some other people as well. Pardon me. I'm just going to scooch this over. So in the meantime, though, in the time that I needed to take a break between recording this, I received a beautiful package. So I'm going to use some of the goodies, and you'll see that they line up. So uh, just to give you a reason why this package came, I, um, a friend of mine who I actually met on the retreat, the last retreat that I did, owns this gorgeous shop in Philly on Walnut Street, I think, um, called Ritual Shop. And they were having, with COVID and closing of businesses and stuff, they were having an auction, like, you know, raffle kind of thing. So I won. I won one. I won one. (laughs) I also, at the same time, um, purchased some stuff from their shop as well, which all came together. So um, I got these here. 
and I got some that make some pretty sounds as well. But one of the things that I won was this gorgeous little candle. It's a rose quartz candle by Jax Kelly. And if I could try to describe what this smells like, it smells like Valentine's Day. It smells like candy and lipstick and perfume in a really pleasant way. It's like a bit floral, a bit like fragrance. Do you know it does have a fragrance in there for sure? I don't know. I don't think it's like a natural fragrance. And I'm not talking smack. I just, you know, it might be, but it's very strong smelling. And I thought how lovely because what really came up during the card reading and the chat for me was a lot of opportunity right now for self-healing or for healing or for releasing or purging, but really like mothering ourselves and taking care of ourselves and babying ourselves a little bit. Not to say we're babies, but you know what I mean. So I thought that self-healing, healing in general would be a good theme for Cancerian season. So I'm just going to trim the wick. Look at my fancy. <laughs> Little cuties. It's pretty trim, but sometimes... Oh, sorry if that was noisy. That's okay. Okay, and one of the things I bought from her, um, from Ritual Shop, are a couple more packs, a few more packs of matches. Oh, finally! I love these. So I picked out patchouli, French vanilla, and sandalwood. And it's funny, all together they smell like Lang Lang. Which ones are they going to be? <laughs> Sandalwood. Mm, so good. Oh, it's so fresh. The incense. Match. Sandalwood. Freshy fresh. Ooh. Look at that crisp. Look at that. and greatest good, imperfect comfort, and alignment with our cute little rose quartz candle here. I'd love for us to be able to set an intention together to support anything we might need, anything you might need, anything the collective might be supported by, for this Cancerian season for this time and of course if you're watching this at a different time or a different year <laughs> just for whatever you need to reach you to be open to allow your subconscious to pull in to take what it what it would be served by but for us and for an intention right now that I can set I'd love for this session to focus on self-healing 
on clearing and supporting the emotional pathways, essentially like a muscle or um, some kind of, I'm seeing a muscle, like it's, it's thin, like a, like a meridian, but strong, right? Like the fibers, the, the pathways of the emotional um, cords, the emotional meridians, systems, frequencies, traveling, you know, communicating, <laughs> expressing, coming out into our face and how we express our emotions through your hand, journaling your emotions, through your tears, crying <laughs> emotions, through your makeup, through your decor, through all the, in your dress, you know, like all the ways. And I'd love to work with Again, the theme of self-healing, give you some idea on how you can, from an energy worker standpoint, support yourself during this time. And of course, you can come back to this video anytime as well, particularly through the season. This is just for noise. This is, I just thought I would share. But I got this face glow and it has like two packets. And you mix, um, ooh, that looks, <laughs> that looks suspicious. <laughs> but you mix a little water into here and make a paste with it. And Massage it into your face, let it dry. It has salt, um, lemon essential oil. So if you have sensitive skin, maybe this wouldn't be great, but I bet it would be great on like your shoulders or your knees or something like that. Alright, so let me just grab my stones. Alright, so one of the stones that I brought out is um, actually a gift from Rachel and Josephine. It's this really beautiful, really, really beautiful piece of, um, I guess, geode, but it has really interesting formations of the crystals, almost like they're building this little, little pyramid or little like city in here. It looks really cool. And sometimes when I'm meditating and doing some self-healing work, I kind of see myself like up in space. <laughs> in something like this, you know, or it could be down in the earth as well, but I don't know, I really love geodes as if we could like shrink down and crawl inside them and just kind of be held. I thought that they represent a really beautiful, um, just safe space, you know, you can connect with it as a safe space for yourself, particularly when we're healing, processing, letting out our emotions, you know, so geodes really hold that for me, so I thought it would be nice. Then I have one that I might pronounce incorrectly, but it's called uh, gar Garnierite, Garnerite, and it's a really lovely kind of gray, grayish, um, soft turquoise, soft, um, soft teal, like more of a greeny kind of turquoisey teal. And they have, this one has it, but it's honestly usually difficult for me to find anyway. But there's this like really lovely blue flash similar to um, the blue flash on a rainbow moonstone, you know. Uh, I don't think every piece has one. Oh, there you can kind of see it there, right? So freaking pretty. But this one definitely has a lot of self-healing for me, like I use it when I'm processing when I'm developing, when I'm specifically working on upgrading myself in some way. So I thought that this would be a nice one to bring in for this session. And it's such a lovely stone. I'm pretty sure it's also a feldspar like moonstone is. So it has a similarity to like, you know, labradorite, moonstone, and that's a very cancerian, we could say, you know, stone as well. I believe what makes it green is actually copper. And copper is the metal of healers. Sorry for the traffic sound. 
gorgeous, right? Garn Garnier, right? And then I brought out just one more, actually. This is a piece of um, Gerasol or Milky Quartz or um, Blue Opal Quartz, I think it's sometimes called, or Opal Quartz. It's quite lovely, very feminine, very soft, like, you know, like soft vibes. I love this for the lunar connection as well, like, it has a luminous quality to it, I guess is a way to say. I'm seeing like a fan, like a hand fan that has like made out of feathers or has feathers on the end of it or something. Anyway, so, Gerasol, a lovely Garnierite, I think you say it, <laughs> and a um, geode. I'm so happy to have these into, um, into the matches. Alright, so one of the other things that I received are these incense and <laughs> um, just so you know I was uh, smoking weed in this room a couple days ago <laughs> and I set off the fire alarm finally so I know that it works and it's not pleasant <laughs> it's like fire, fire, like it says fire so I'm gonna light this, I'm gonna play with it but then I'm gonna stick it in the bathroom Sorry, it's probably too much information, but... Alright, another thing that I got in my little grab bag were some mat um, matches, or some incense. These are patchouli, sweet grass, charcoal incense, hand-dipped in California by P.F. Candle Co. Firefly. So we'll just wave this around through your auric field. Let me get a little ash. Let's not be a hero, right? <laughs> Over the crown. Mm, I'm seeing like uh, codes or like a Roman numerals or different um, lettering or something kind of spinning around like a like a ring that has words on it but it's numerical or a language I don't recognize sorry there's a big cherry on here and I know that that's a danger zone for me there we go a big cherry yeah like looks like just like a metal ring with again like Roman numerals or something. Could be a clock. So we're focused now on just clearing the column within you, clearing your energy channel, clearing that pathway. That nexus point or nexus path within you 
how you are so divinely connected to spirit, to matter. You pull in the energy of the universe, of source, of from everywhere. So I just want to clear, clear this pathway. I'm seeing like a old-fashioned bike. Seeing the desert, rock formations, New Mexico pops in my head. I've never been, but that was the word that I heard. Alright, and we're also going to work through and just go down the arms. Clearing these meridians as well. We're going to put in some channel through some codes, some patterns with affirmations and images of self-healing, of clearing, of movement, of flow, of empowerment, of growth, of release, of maturity of intellect, of patience, of your methods for calming the storm within you when you experience it, sailing through the storm, just that, this ain't my first rodeo kind of vibe, right? You've seen it, you've done it, you've lived it. I got like the uh, <laughs> Forrest Gump. Oh god, I haven't seen that movie in so long, but when Lieutenant Dan like goes swimming in the ocean, like or the sea after that storm, and he made his peace with God or whatever. I'm seeing like the Robin Williams version of uh, Popeye and the freaking oct octopus and stuff. Oh my god, I haven't thought about that in so long. So, triumph over our inner adversary. And oh my god, what a better like representation for like emotional, like getting pulled down like an octopus, you know? like the old stories of them more than what they actually are. Down the legs. Alright, just picking some kind of my attention being drawn around the hips. There might be some anger. There may be some feeling not supported. I'm having a hard time perhaps connecting with reality in a sense. Um, with the density of reality is a better way to say that. I can relate, but, like I needed a whole day just because I was super emotional. I had to stop and let myself just get hit with it, you know? So it was hard to ground and get back to it. Going right in, like right into the root. Clearing, clearing, clearing. Moving, swirling. Just moving it around. Up to the sacral. Up the solar plexus, up to the heart, up to the throat, up to the third eye, to the crown, and the back of the head near the third eye, the back of the throat, back of the heart, back of the solar plexus, sacral root. thing I'll share with you from my little package. It just was all so perfect. 
is the spray. Oh, like, <laughs> I really lucked out. I'm so grateful. <laughs> All right. So the last thing I have to show you for my little package here is a spray that was also in this like raffle bag that I won mystery bag <laughs> and honestly how perfect like all these things are exactly what I go through all the time and I did smell this and I love this I really love it it is species by the thousands chakra spray so it has frankincense lavender eucalyptus um, rose <laughs> Cinnamon, sandalwood, and patchouli, and it's handmade in Brooklyn. What up, Brooklyn? I'll show you the package. Uh, not sponsored at all, if I need to say that. Just kind of sharing. So, let's use this lovely freaking spray. I'm going to use it myself first, actually. Add to my hand, my elbow, my shoulder, armpit, <laughs> heart, and up over my head, lower, bottom of my torso, knees, and under my feet, pardon, shoulder, elbow, and palm. So let's go over your head, center of the chest, um, Lower torso, <laughs> knees, below the feet, um, armpits, shoulder, armpits, palm, palm. Mm. smells really, really good. set an intention together again. I'm seeing owls again. I feel like owls keep coming up like a barn owl's face, but it was like mirrored. It's interesting. Anyway, let's just connect with our intention to heal, to soothe, to nurture ourselves, to allow ourselves to indulge, if we need to call it that. Uh, in our self-care and prioritizing our own needs and holding our boundaries and caring for ourselves while we hold our boundaries, while we do the work, while we are in these periods of transformation in this uh, under construction kind of year in general, and tune into the subconscious highest intelligence of innate healing capabilities that are already within you. Your body knows how. Your mind knows how. Your emotional body knows how. It's just, let's just let it, you know? How do we prevent our own healing? Well, through continuing to do things that are not healthy, that we know are not healthy for us. And I'm not talking about Ben and Jerry's <laughs> or that kind of stuff. I'm talking about toxic relationships. I'm talking about giving and giving too much, you know, too much, being too open. I'm talking about um, telling ourselves some very negative self-talk that makes us feel like we can't get things done. That's the stuff we want to focus on. And of course, please, you know, I'll even bring the camera back. But please, like, have a look at this little flame here and set your own intention. Are you working on something specifically? I'm seeing fish, like actual like pet fish or something, aquarium. Are you working on something? Are you 
processing? Are you trying to heal some aspect of your life? You know, just set a little intention for yourself now. over the face to start I talked about this in my stories but I got a facial recently ooh la la, right? and afterwards I, had, I like cried <laughs> and it was intense, you know? And I think it was this combination of being like so touch deprived and then finally having someone like <laughs> care for me, you know? And I'd love to just channel that for you, that care, that nurturing, that support, those compliments to tell you, you're so beautiful. <laughs> you have such lovely skin. Now is the time for you to pamper yourself, to relax, to take care of yourself, to prioritize yourself. I'm seeing two towers again. Kind of similar to the moon card, but much closer together. They turned into bishops, like chess pieces, bishops. I want to let you know that yes, we're responsible for ourselves, we're responsible for our own lives and in a way, I think we're responsible and, you know, like in the collective, we have certain responsibilities to just be truly ourselves and allow our gifts to shine, right? But I just want to tell you that whatever you're dealing with, it's not your fault, it's not because you did anything wrong, you know? But if something's not right for you, if something's not working out, if something's just making you feel like inadequate or overlooked or anything, I just want to hold space for you and channel. I'm seeing like a shell with mother of pearl in it. Just sending this comforting energy to soothe your brow, your face, work through the back of the neck, the jaw, shoulders, release, right, Being an airplane again, like the tail of the airplane. <sighs> Seeing some kind of food. like Mediterranean or something. Alright. Just set an intention to connect with the, the mother that you are. You know, whether you're super macho or not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but like, the, the caregiver within you, you know, the nurturer within you. We all have this, some much more um, visibly than others, much more um, predominantly, but we all do have this caregiving kind of quality within us, right? So just 
just close your eyes and invite that caregiver facet, that caregiver personality or whatever comes up for you to be revealed. Maybe you see yourself, maybe you see a doctor or a nurse, maybe you see a guide like in, you know, journeying experiences. Maybe you see a tool, like a pocket watch, or a Swiss army knife, or anything at all. But just allow some kind of manifestation, a color, a song, a sound, a pet, to see what comes into your mind. A vessel, a pillow, a dream. A shady place in your yard to sit, a book, a hug, <sighs> forgive my breathing, sorry, but just as you connect with this, whatever it reveals itself to be for you, as you do, press your fingers together, your first finger and your thumb, you can do it in just one hand. And start to build a rapport with this representation of the healer or the caregiver within you. If it's a person, maybe you can ask some questions. If it's a tool, perhaps you can just gaze at it, study it, feel it. Is it heavy? Is it smooth? Is it cool? Is it warm? If it's a hug or a memory or a book, just allow yourself to the best of your ability to experience it. And as you do, make a connection, <laughs> an anchor. Connect with the feeling of being cared for, of being gifted, of being a priority of rest, of dreams, of processing. Caregiving guide, your caregiving helper, your caregiving association. And know that you can call it back when you're doing your personal work, when you are having a bath or a shower, having a cry or a drive. some healing symbols, sending them through, watching them travel to where they need to go most in your energetic system. Through time and space, through time and space, we're not limited to the here and now. We can send this back in time, we can send this to the future, we can send this to tomorrow morning. <laughs> but allow it to just go where it is best served.
another spray that is absolutely wonderful. Bill sent it to me. <laughs> it's called Vanilla or Vanilla Kisses by Enchanted Essences and this is really really good as well. No affiliation, just sharing. It's all natural and I have a really hard time finding like natural vanilla stuff particularly because there's no such thing as vanilla essential oil it's a vanilla absolute it would be kind of more similar to you know what you bake with basically like bourbon or something extracted and uh, the vanilla extracted into an alcohol or some type of other non-alcoholic version but this has a lovely like vanilla minty kind of smell what is it? Enchanted Essences. So. It smells so good. I love vanilla and mint and chocolate and this has like that kind of desserty, <laughs> desserty. Oh my god, I can smell it right. Oh, it's, it smells like mint white chocolate, but like in the best, best, best way. Mm. So I'm going to spray along your back here. And mine. Some vanilla kisses for your back. And I'm gonna bring it across your clavicle here as well. Oh my god, it smells so good. And the clavicle and shoulders are just really sticking out for me. I mean, for me, I have like the most ridiculous clavicle and shoulders. But for whatever reason, it's tied. It's not just me. <laughs> it's not just my anatomy. I'm really picking it up and I can see it like almost like a mouse or just this like opening, you know? Uh, am I saying that right? Just the, the shape of it, you know? Kind of like this. I'm seeing like pearls in here and stuff. So there's something, there's something for some of you. To do with the clavicle, even energetically, even through like esoteric anatomy of tightness, of really pulling it in or keeping them up or feeling very defensive, feeling very tense and on edge and protective. And you know, the nature of doing that, it's not necessarily bad, right? We need to protect ourselves sometimes, right? It's okay. It's okay to comfort yourself and like do whatever body language you need to, you know? But I just want to channel into this. It feels like a bowl, you know? It's like, like a boat or a bowl. I just want to channel through just like as if rainwater was collecting in this kind of clavicle cavern. <laughs> I'm seeing a children's book about like the rhinoceros and the and its skin, something like that. I'm seeing guinea pigs, <laughs> maybe hamster looks like a guinea pig. I'm seeing a. Cut. I'm seeing a dagger on picking up on your right side. It feels like it's more towards the back. So if we're making that boat, it's like a dagger kind of coming down right here. This is the more masculine side. This is the sign, the side more representative of the past. So something may have, for some of you, this isn't for everyone, but some of you may have felt very stabbed in the back or something came down on you uh, energetically, figuratively, emotionally. It doesn't have to mean like physical pain. I'm seeing it, it looks white. It's a white blade, a white dagger. <sighs> All right, I'm just trying to tune in and see what it's about. <laughs> Just channel 
feeling here. I'm seeing a release to come out. I'm seeing the tissue repaired, the energetic tissue repaired. The blood vessels just intuitively putting itself back together, sending some energy here. Could be patriarchal, could be father related, could be your own masculine energy. And again, could be from the past in some way. Alright. And now I'm seeing a little bird, like a little, almost cartoony, like cutesy little bluebird. Nest, yeah. I don't know. I never really work with this space, so I don't I'll have to look it up. But it just feels so sacred. Feels so like tender, so private, so intimate, right? You know, like the crab shell. self-healing techniques to just remember you know and I know everyone in Patreon knows this because we go over it so often but remember of course that you are divinely connected you are connected to everything you are part of everything and you are a creator you are you have will right in this life experience you have your personal will and you're connected to energy and you are energy and you move energy through your will, through your thoughts, through your prayers, through your vocal ability to vocalize perhaps, or your ability to visualize, or your ability to feel. So you're always connected. You can always do this yourself as well. But just focus on your heart space. Focus on this point, this direct connection to all that is, your soul experiences, your soul guidance, your past lives, your future lives. Unlimited energy, unlimited love, non-judgment, peace, just this beautiful heart-based kind of energy. And through your will, send that connection direct that connection like it was an atom <laughs> to split or multiply is a better way to say it to multiply and multiply and multiply and multiply and see it making bubbles that go up the chakra points and down the chakra points and more bubbles or splitting atoms um Duplicating, multiplying, going down the arms and going down the legs. Alright, so you've got this little bubbly matrix moving through your system. And focus back again on your heart and that direct connection. And through your will, your words, your visualization, your feelings, feel the guidance of your heart your soul, of this life experience, of your higher mind, your higher awareness, traveling and sending out messages, waking things up deep within you, releasing things that do not serve you, and just like little ribbons or little almost te technological, like little text messages or something. Emojis, whatever it comes up for, little hearts, just sending down through these bubbles, like it's created a, this passageway. Right? 
feel the ground below you, connect with Mother Matter, feel spirit, the pattern above you, just for, you know, just to have a place to focus. Call down the pattern, call up matter, become that nexus point, or acknowledge yourself rather as this nexus point between divine forces and know that you have these archetypes, this divine pattern, this divine intelligence and the material support, the resources, the opportunities, the things here in this world that we need that we require here for you disconnect and feel supported feel connected, feel that flow it's very simple, we don't have to overthink it we don't have to make it complicated at all alright, we're gonna fluff up your Thank you again so very much for allowing me to share a little piece of your path today. Hope you enjoyed our session. I hope that you enjoy Cancerian season. I, I know it's such crazy times, but you know, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> I send you so much love, so much appreciation. Thank you so, 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 so much just for everything, for the support, for everything, everything, everything. All right, I bow to the divine within you, within me, <laughs> to this magic, this force, this energy, this pattern, this intelligence, this energy of matter, and, and that which is not seen, all of the stuff that we are both a part of, that we are all a part of, this connection that we share, you know? So much love to you, and namaste.